Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now, this is a new week, praise God, and God has a lot He wants you to learn. Now, the purpose of this broadcast, I keep telling you, is to teach you God's word and teach you how to live, not just believing, but by believing, living indeed. Praise God. That's what Jesus wants from us. Before we go into today's broadcast, I know it's going to be great. Can we make demand for our daily bread? Wherever you are, believe that Jesus will answer your demand. He asked you to ask. So why would he withhold from you? So join me right now and make this demand. Say, Father, I demand right now today's daily bread for me. I receive it from heaven in the name of Jesus. Let every angel that is responsible for this do what ought to be done so that I receive. I stand in faith and I receive all that God has planned for me today. In Jesus' name I ask. Amen. Praise God. You see, as simple as that sounds, yet so powerful. God answers prayers. And, and when we pray according to his will, now his will has been expressed to us. And his will is that we have daily bread to receive. And then beyond having, now I love the way Jesus puts it, give us this day our daily bread. So it's gone beyond asking God to do something special for you. It's more of demanding what is yours from God. Your name is written on it. So all you need to do is to ask and receive. Jesus says so that your joy may be full. My prayer for you is that today your joy will be full. There are things you've been asking the Lord for. There are things you have been waiting for. I hear the Lord say to you today, that which you have been waiting for, you are receiving it now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, receive it in Jesus' name. I see, man, there's, there's something particularly you've been waiting for for four years now. You've been waiting for that thing and it's four years now sometimes you wonder if it's worth it hear me it's coming right now you get that news it has been done approved for you and go get it praise god thank you lord jesus we just give you praise father for everything all the supplies that is taking place right now we give you praise for it we give you praise for it. Hey, you need supply of healing. Receive it right now. It's part of your daily bread. Daily bread is not just money and food to eat. Everything that pertains to your life and godliness today has been given to you. Praise God. So receive today's portion. Oh, you don't have strength in your body. Get up and receive strength right now. Just stand up. I say, Lord, I receive my daily bread of healing right now. I receive my daily bread of daily bread of strength right now. So receive it. If it's finances you need, receive it right now. You, re you are receiving everything that God has given to you for today. It's yours in Jesus' name. A I see someone, uh, there's something, uh, uh, let me describe it the way you would know it. Like worms troubling you. But it's, it's kind of serious. It's not normal worm in your stomach. But, but this, 
this sickness that you're suffering from and you've been suffering from it for a while has to do with worms worms that's what you were told you know when i say worms you will understand in the name of the lord jesus christ if you will just stretch your hands towards whatever device you're using right now the anointing of god's spirit is going to hit you and it will clear every not just clear the worms i hear the lord say the effects of that worms the effect the destruction it has done to your body so you are receiving complete healing right now in the name of the lord jesus receive it now in jesus name amen praise god that's the lord expressing his love for you Get up and begin to do what you couldn't do before. Get up, eat what you couldn't eat before. It is gone. Praise God. And I would like to hear from you. I I'll, I'll really like to hear this, this testimony. Every other testimony of what God is doing in your life. Send your testimonies through um, any of our platforms on social media, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. You can send a personal message to our numbers that is on the screen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Turn your Bibles with me. We have been talking about believing in Jesus. What does it mean? What does it take? What do we get in believing Jesus? And our text is from Mark. You know it. You know it by now. Praise God. Mark chapter 16. And, and from verse um 17 but let me start again from verse 15 or let me start from verse 14 oh, last week thursday i was sharing i mean our fellowship and something struck my attention you know the word of god you see the more we look into it the more we see it's good. let me look let, let me start from verse 14 and afterwards mark chapter 16 and verse 14 Afterward, he appeared unto the eleven. And when they sat at meat, sorry, afterwards, he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat. And he upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. Now, these are the eleven disciples. Remember, there were twelve. Now, Judas was dead. Remember, he went to hang himself. Now then, so these 11 disciples, you know, they've been having experiences one after the other. Oh, we've seen the Lord, we've seen the Lord. But then some still had issues with it. Like, look, man, I don't understand what you're saying. Now I've explained why that happened um, to you. Several things were going on at that time. Those who had seen the Lord Jesus, because from when Jesus rose from the dead, he never was consistent in his appearance. In other words, in the kind of personality he appeared with. He didn't appear to them always like the Jesus that they knew that died. And the reason for that is simple. The moment he rose from the dead, he rose in his original glory as the word of God made flesh. Now, as the word of God made flesh. Now, this is one deep truth many of you need to understand as the word of god made flesh he can take any form at all he cannot be consistent with only one form now this is what was happening when he rose from the dead so all the different people that have seen him their description of him was not consistent the only thing that was consistent is that they heard him that's how they knew he was the one so it means those that cannot hear him cannot see him now that's why i've told you this before you know i was i was praying one time you know studying and praying and and i said to the lord i said but lord you you kind of didn't act fast and smart now i was telling god that he was not smart <laughs> how funny <laughs> yeah i was talking to him. i said but lord i I think when Jesus rose from the dead, that was the opportunity he had 
to preach the gospel, I mean to cause the gospel to spread to the whole world as fast as possible. I mean, show up in Pilate's office, show up in, show up in Kefa's house, his bedroom. <laughs> you understand? All those soldiers that, that crucified him, show up. All those people that voted against him that he should be crucified, show up before them. And, and I was talking to the Lord about it, and then the Lord says, no, even if I show up, they will not see me. I say, how? He said, because they will not hear my voice. I only go to people who can hear my voice. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I never thought about it. Like, whoa. That was the challenge. A lot of people do not hear his voice. So that's why Jesus only appeared to the people that when they hear him, they will recognize him. Because it's no more about appearance anymore. It's about the real thing, the word, or oh, the voice of God. Praise God. So, now, so Jesus now came to the 11 and he was like, you guys, what's wrong with you? But I was like, he upbraided them because of their unbelief and hardness of heart. Some people have said to them, he's reason. We saw him. He spoke to us. He gave us this message. At least even from the message, you would know that this is Jesus. So they hardened their heart not to believe. Now, this is something that a lot of people do. See, because you're used to one particular thing, even when you're hearing the testimony and you sense that this testimony is true, you harden your heart to your old ways. Now, this is where a lot of people need to repent. But then nevertheless, Jesus finished upbraiding these fellow guys for their unbelief. And the next thing he's saying to them, he says, go and preach the gospel to every creature. Who's going to preach the gospel? These same unbelievers? <laughs> Praise God. See? See? Because Jesus knew they had the capacity to believe. So he was dealing with them according to the, their capacity. Now, that's exactly how Jesus deals with you. He deals with you according to your capacity. He doesn't deal with you according to your status today. That's why he will tell you to do things that look impossible at first. A lot of people have refused to think inwards and put pressure on themselves to do what is right or to do what the Lord has commanded them to do. Rather, they chose the part of hardening, hardening their hearts. The Lord said, I'm going to give you money, you buy that property. <laughs> You've been married for so long. The Lord said, look, I'm going to give you children. <laughs> Lord, I've passed for you. This thing, yeah, maybe we should just leave it like that. Huh? You see? Hardness of heart. But then God, notwithstanding, still does what he has planned to do. You see this even in the Bible days. Abraham did the same thing. When God told Abraham, Sarah, your wife will give birth. Say, ah, what? That Ishmael may live before you. What do you think was going on? He was trying to harden his heart not to believe God. But the Lord still said the same thing. He says, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Then he said, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Now, there are arguments here. Which baptism was he referring to? Was it water baptism or, or Holy Ghost baptism? He was referring to Holy Ghost baptism, not water baptism. You know, sometimes when people argue these things, you, you wonder, what, 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 what rules your mind? Ah, I, I learned this many, many years ago. Instead of arguing, I'll take the matter to the Lord and say, Lord, what do you think about this matter? And I'll wait before him and he'll give me an answer. And he's always right. Praise God. But this one is even clear from scriptures. This is Jesus speaking. He says, go and preach the gospel to every creature. Anyone who believes and is baptized shall be saved. And someone is saying, you have to be baptized with water before you'll be saved. But then, if we go to Mark chapter 1, I'll show you something here. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 
Mark chapter 1, John the Baptist was preaching here and then he said in verse 8, I indeed baptize you with water. This is simple English. I, John the Baptist, indeed baptize you with water. But he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. How simple can that be made for you? I baptize with water. But the one who's coming after me, referring to Jesus, he will baptize you with the Holy Ghost. So two baptisms, one water baptism, the second one Holy Ghost baptism, performed by two different people. John the Baptist is for water baptism. Holy Ghost baptism is for Jesus. Right? Okay, then we go to Acts chapter 1. Maybe um, it wasn't clear from what John said. Let's look at Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1, Jesus preaching and talking to his disciples just before he left. He said, verse 5, Acts chapter 1, verse 5. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence, meaning not many days from now. Okay, now John said when Jesus comes, he will baptize you with a different kind of baptism, which is baptism of the Holy Ghost. Then now Jesus himself before leaving, telling his disciples that you, John truly, he affirmed that John's ministry was water baptism. And then he now said to them, but you, now take note of the word, but it changes everything. It says, for John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many days hence. So a few days from now, you are going to be baptized with the Holy Ghost. So he used the same word, baptism okay then now thank you lord jesus now we go back to acts chapter 16 and you judge for yourself so now when he says he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved what baptism do you think he will be referring to definitely not water baptism if i have said if i have said i'm giving them water to to eat, to, to drink, or I'm giving them fruits to eat, but you will give them food to eat. When you come, what should they be expecting? Fruit or food? Food. You have come. They have eaten fruit. They are looking for something beyond the fruit. Now they need food. And the moment they see you and you say, it's my time to serve, what would you serve them? it will be useless for you to go serve them fruit again. So this is, this is not an argument at all. Jesus was referring to the Holy Ghost baptism. And number two, salvation is not the work of a man. Salvation is the work of God. It doesn't matter how many altar calls you respond to. If you are not saved by God, I'm sorry, no pastor can save you. Your job is to believe. His job is to baptize you. And he knows the ones that he baptizes. And if you have not received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, brothers and sisters, I'm sorry to tell you this. You are not saved. You may be a pastor. You may be whoever. You are not saved. You risk going to hell but i've been preaching for many years i don't just believe in this holy ghost baptism stuff i'm sorry to tell you this you are not preaching for god you may be zealous but you are not preaching for god jesus literally told them in that acts chapter one let me show you Verse 4, and being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, you have heard of me. He told them, wait until this baptism takes place. 
So if you have gone without the baptism, you are running by yourself. You were not sent. Praise God. I mean, this, 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 this should be settled in your mind. Not water baptism. It's Holy Ghost baptism. What about those who are still being baptized with water? They are just washing themselves. Water baptism truly, truly have no spiritual significance today. It was John's ministry. And Jesus has come. His ministry is to baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Anyone who believes in Jesus ought to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. My time is up. Praise God. But I pray this puts to rest any argument you have in this regard. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You're the one Jesus said will guide us into all truth. And I ask everyone listening to me right now, truly, be guided into all truths. In Jesus' name. Amen. Have a wonderful day today. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.